Hey everybody, what's up? It's Pat Flynn here. It is Monday, October 23rd. Thank you so much for joining me today. And if you're watching the replay, that's awesome. But if you're here live, awesome as well. We're gonna be talking about affiliate marketing today. Affiliate marketing is something that is way underutilized in the space of online business. And whether you are just starting out, even if you don't have a following yet, or even just a social following, and especially if you already are selling something and have a following and have products out there, affiliate marketing can be injected into your brand in a relatively easy way. This is why I love it so much. It's so um, so much lower lift to do. However, to do it right, that's why we're here. So welcome in everybody. I see a lot of people coming in from all over the world. I saw Portugal, UK, a lot of US folk all over the United States. Thank you again so much for introducing yourself and for being here today. I'm seeing some familiar faces like Bill. What's up, Bill Dube? And, and Contempo Coding is in the house. We're gonna have a podcast with her later. Um, but for right now, let's get into affiliate marketing. So let's talk about it. What is affiliate marketing? What is it even? Like, I think you might have an idea. And if you're in the chat right now, let me know if you've done affiliate marketing before and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll give you some strategies to take home with you, I'm sure. But what is affiliate marketing? Affiliate marketing is the ability to generate an income by recommending products that aren't yours. Other people, other companies' products, you can generate a commission. There are people out there who are looking for these products and you can be the connector between the two. And where does the money come from? Well, it's actually not coming from the customer. It's coming from the company. It's a reward or a thank you for sharing their product and getting more customers. Here's why this works, because you have an audience or soon to have an audience. You have authority with that audience. They trust you. These are the three things that a company who has a product doesn't have that you do. So this is a win for everybody, and this is why this works so well. Affiliate marketing is great for a number of different reasons. Number one, you don't need to spend the time to create your own products. This is really, really handy because it can take a lot of time and effort, and trust me, I know, to create your own products, and creating your own products is great, but promoting another product that already exists, that already works, that your audience is already buying is even better. Next, customer service is pretty much handled by the company that you're promoting, right? Imagine being able to sell products and not have to worry about customers. You just send people to that affiliate link and you get paid, right? That's awesome. Now, hopefully, obviously, you are working with a reputable company that will take care of those people or else it does look and reflect poorly on you. And we'll talk more about the strategies of how to pick the right product a little bit later in this presentation. It's scalable. Whether you send one person to a link to buy a product or 100 people, or perhaps even 1,000 people, which can happen, it scales with you, which is really great. This is why it can start right now, even if you're just getting started, and it can grow with you over time. And on that line, it works on all stages of business. If you are just starting a podcast, for example, you might think, oh, I need to wait till I have a certain number of people in my audience before I get started. Not true. You can actually start to already talk about the products that you're using, the products that are working for you, and over time, when people go back and listen to that first episode, or even the 10 people who listen to that first episode, it is of value to them. And that's why I love this analogy of planting seeds, right? Every mention of an affiliate product on a blog post, a YouTube video, on a podcast, is like planting a seed that can sprout later for you. You can create long-lasting partnerships. One underutilized strategy within the world of affiliate marketing is something that involves the partnership with the company. It's not just promoting that one product. But what if you can get to a point where you are working together with that company to promote not just that product, but perhaps products that are coming down the line that you can get advanced notice of. Maybe they are able to send you free products ahead of time so that you can be one of the first people to review them. Perhaps you can even become an advisor for that company, which I've done and I've taught several others how to do as well. So there's a lot of benefits there with the company that you're working with. And it can become really passive. You just set up these things once and they can continue to work for you. And you can get started right now, which is really great. Also, welcome to my teammate, Ashley, who's in the chat with us right now. And again, thank you for spending time with me on a Monday here. Before we get into a lot of the strategies that will work for you in affiliate marketing, we need to talk about some of the mind myths that might stop you from making this happen or even getting started. It's really important to do this because I could give you all the strategies in the world, but if you are not clear in your mind about what's going on, you're not able to understand sort of the anxieties or the, 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 the stories that you're telling yourself, well, then none of this is gonna work. So number one, you might think it hurts your brand to promote other brands that aren't yours. And the truth is, yes, that is possible, which is why selecting the right product is gonna be really important. But 
the flip side is true also. If you promote products that are great for your audience, guess what? That actually helps your brand. You become an expert curator in that way. And you're gonna hear me say that word a few times today, curator, because that's a lot of what we do online for our audience. We're helping them make decisions. We're helping them cut through all the noise so they can find the products that make sense for them. Number two, they there aren't any good products to promote in your niche. If you believe that's true, then perhaps you haven't dug deep enough yet. And I also have some strategies, some really easy questions that you could ask your audience to help you understand what you could potentially promote. But this is not true. There's so many different products out there and there could be some products that on the surface might not feel like they're for your niche specifically. However, because it involves them or because it's sort of an outlier product, it can still be relevant to them and you can actually provide a lot of value to your audience in that way by recommending that product to them. Number three, you're gonna make more money by selling your own products. Now on paper, yes, that would make sense, right? Because if a product costs $100 and it was yours, you sell it, you make $100. If the product is somebody else's and they have a 50% affiliate commission, which means you get 50% and they get 50%, well then you're only making 50 bucks out of a $100 product. But the whole thing here is you're promoting products that you likely couldn't create yourself. I can never promote my own email service provider. I don't have the coding knowledge or even the time to do that, but I'll promote ConvertKit because it's the best one that I found. I use it myself and it's great. So this way, I'm making more money. I'm selling my own products, but I'm also selling products that I can never create. And this opens up avenues of revenue because you're now able to promote products that aren't yours to your audience. So no, you can make more money by selling your products and other people's products. Four, you have to use shady marketing tactics to make this work. Please don't do that. I think if you've known the Smart Passive Income brand for a while, you know that I do not condone shady marketing practices. However, they do exist. You'll see a lot of people use them out there and they can work, but there are ways to, especially with affiliate marketing, the more transparent you are, the better in fact. The more authentic you are, the better because it's not your product. You actually have to be more transparent than normal because it is another person's product, not yours. Number five, it's too late to get started. Nope, you can always promote things. There's always new things coming out over time. Number six, there's too much competition. Here's the thing, you have your own audience with your own level of authority and unique trust that they have with you. The only competition you have is with yourself, right? Sure, there might be other people promoting the same product, but you have the audience, you have your voice, you have your own experiences that couldn't compete with somebody who, yes, may be promoting the same product, but has a different set of experiences, a different level of expertise to add on top of that, different pieces of advice that can go along with that product that you're promoting. So no, there isn't too much competition. And number seven, your audience isn't big enough. Already touched on this, but you can have a small audience and still have this work really, really well for you. What's up, Amy? And we got Goddess P, Tiffany, Adventures of Diana. Great to see y'all today. Here's what I'm gonna share with you. So number one, I'm gonna share with you the biggest mistake that you can make as an affiliate, whether you're a newbie or even somebody who's been doing this for a while, this is a very common mistake and I want you to avoid it. Number two, a product market test. I have a five point system for determining whether or not a product is likely to work out for you when it comes to promoting to your audience. And we're gonna go through that process so you can go through with any products that you've come across and run it through this test to see if it might work for you or not. Next, specific strategies, very specific in fact, that you can use to promote your products. I'm gonna demo some of these things and share with you just so you can take them. I want you to steal these strategies and use them for yourself. You might even be able to use a lot of these strategies. I mean, you can even set up some of these things by tomorrow, which would be really neat. And sometimes people do do that after these workshops. Number four, the affiliate marketer's secret weapon. I use this to not just generate more revenue, not just stand out from the crowd of, of my colleagues and other people who are in the same space, but also to generate organic traffic as well. And so I'm gonna share that with you and I'll go over some examples too. Number five, rules to keep in mind so you don't get in trouble. There are some rules, uh, no matter where in the world you're at, but especially in the US, there's the FTC the Federal Trade Commission, which requires you to do certain things if you're promoting somebody else's product. Why? Because they wanna keep consumers safe and if you just pretend it's yours but it's not, then that's not okay. So we don't want you to get banned from Amazon and other things. Amazon has its own special set of rules which we'll go over as well since that's the most common affiliate program people are a part of. 
And number six, examples and case studies that you can copy for your own promotions. And if you stick around to the end, I do have a free gift if you stick around. And what you're about to see is actually a open window inside. We have a course inside of our All Access Pass called the 123 Affiliate Marketing Course. It's our second most popular course, in fact. Our most popular one is our podcasting one, which we just promoted a couple of weeks ago, which was really successful. But the affiliate marketing is even better, in my opinion, because you get a clear ROI. You put some time and effort into it, you will see a return from it. Obviously, results vary, but it's one that can happen much sooner than later, right? You still have to set up the podcast, and that's great. You could build your audience even from scratch, but with affiliate marketing, you could start to see results rather quickly. However, the big promise is not any of those things. Not You're not gonna be raining cash by tomorrow. You're not gonna be driving Lamborghinis and yachts. Actually, I think that's a Ferrari. Here is the big promise. You're gonna have a better vision for what this affiliate marketing language is and how to promote products so that you can get thanked. I want you to get thanked for making money. That's what can happen here. Many people who have watched this presentation in the past have been able to generate more than $500 a month just simply by implementing a few of these things. And a lot of times you can have these things be recurring. It depends on the product that you're promoting. We'll talk more about that in a little bit. But you have now or will now have the potential to generate more revenue. And I'm just wanting to give you some specific dollar amounts that I've seen in the past from people who've watched this. And number three, you'll know the, uh, the affiliate marketing language. And the cool thing about this is once you learn the language of affiliate marketing and how this works, you can then start to get creative with it. You can find new ways to do it in your own style and in your own voice. And I want you to take that home with you. And like I said, this is an open window into a course that we have in our All Access Pass. We have a special accelerator coming up related to that where you can go through that course with other students and with instructors from our team. Heather will be there walking you through all that in the next four weeks after a kickoff call this Thursday. More on that later, but for now, let's dive in. Now, my first experience with affiliate marketing is actually on my architecture website. This is a website that I built in 2008. It's called greenexamacademy.com. For those of you who don't know, I got laid off from the architecture industry. This is what saved me, this website here. Now, I actually did start by promoting my own product. It was a study guide to help people pass the lead exam, which is a specialized exam in the space. But there was another company, this company right here. This is not my company. This is a separate company that was selling a complimentary product. This was a online exam simulator. So I stole, I sold a study guide. This was an online exam simulator and I used it myself and it was really great. So I reached out to them. I said, Hey, can we work out a deal? I have this traffic. I have a lot of customers. I would love to see what we could do together. And the first thing we did was put a little banner ad on my website for $25 a month. I thought I was making a ton of money back then with $25 a month by simply just adding a banner for that company on my website. Later, I discovered affiliate marketing and I reached out to them. It actually wasn't live on their homepage, but I asked them, do you have an affiliate program? And they're like a partnership program or a referral program? Those are all pretty synonymous. And they said, yes. And here was the deal. If I promoted this product, which is an $80 product, I would get $20 every time I sold somebody a product. And I said, okay, well, I would just need to sell you know, one of these. Hopefully I could sell a couple in a month and be able to make even more than I did with, a, uh, with my, uh, um, by just having a banner ad on the website for $25 a month. Eventually that actually went up to $100 a month. So I needed to sell how many? Five in order to make up the same cost as the advertising route. Well, the first month I sent an email out to my list and put a link on the website for that product. And I had generated a total of $2,000 in that first month, way more than I was making just by doing advertising, by display advertising. The affiliate marketing bug was in me at that point. And I started to do this with a lot of other products and then Smart Passive Income started. A lot of you know the Smart Passive Income blog. By the way, this is what it looked like when it first started. Now it looks a little bit different, obviously. It looks a lot more professional. And we do promote a lot of other products from email service providers, webinar tools, uh, AI tools, those kinds of things on the website. I also have a YouTube channel, as you might know, and a podcast. Some of you have listened to the SPI podcast. There's several other podcasts in our repertoire as well. I've written books like Let Go and Will It Fly and Superfans. Yes, that is Mr. Beast holding my book on the right-hand side there, which is really cool. They gave it away at a conference once. And we sell a lot of courses in the world of SPI. These are some of the courses in our course catalog, 123 Affiliate Marketing, you could see there, Email Marketing Magic, Heroic Online Courses, A to Z Webinars, Power Up Podcasting, Smart From Scratch, et cetera. 
And we also have an online community, a couple of them actually, SPI Pro and the All Access Pass, which gives you access to all those courses. Over the course of 15 years since I've started online business, I've generated over $8 million in revenue, which is mind-blowing, especially because I remember crying after getting laid off and feeling like my life was over back in 2008. It was actually the best thing that could ever happen. But here's the kicker. 45% of that revenue over time has come from affiliate marketing. That is a large number from simply recommending other people's products. If you took all the income away from the communities, the products, all those things over time, I'm still able to generate over $4 million as a result, or nearly $4 million, simply by recommending other people or other companies' products. That's tremendous. And the availability of products out there is definitely not in the world of a shortage. There's so many things that we can all promote to generate more revenue and add more bottom line. And that's what we're gonna be doing right here. So if you're ready to get going, we're gonna get into the brass tacks now. Fire up an emoji in the chat if you're ready to go. I'm gonna say hello to a few people and make sure you're just ready because we got the energy in the room, I feel. We got Rebecca inspired, Lullaboo. We got Gonzo in the house who's reading, super fans. Thank you, my friend, I appreciate that. We have nearly 500 people, actually 501 people right now, which is really amazing. Renee says, did you pay for ads? No, in fact, I hardly ever pay for ads. A lot of this is organic, and a lot of this is because of the trust that I built with an audience. They take your recommendation now. A lot With great power comes great responsibility, and that's gonna be one of the first lessons you'll learn here real quick, is that you have to promote products that you know serve your audience. Because there's so many opportunities to promote other things out there, there's a lot of actual websites that you can go to to sign up for, um, I'm not gonna name them, but you can sign up and then go, wow, look at all the things I could potentially promote. I could promote perfume, I could promote solar panels, I could promote all these different things. Look at the commissions I can earn from them. But if I'm promoting solar panels to you, do you think you're gonna have a good feeling about that? Probably not, because you are not here to get solar panels on your house. You're here to learn about business. So I'm gonna promote things to you that will help you. If I don't do that, that reflects bad on me and you're not gonna trust me anymore. So it's really important that you have that trust. I see a lot of awesome emojis in the house, so let's go into this. Top two mistakes that wannabe affiliate marketers make. Number one, choosing the wrong product. Do not choose a product just because it has a high commission. You wanna choose a product because it's gonna serve your audience, it's gonna help them. Then, if there happens to be an opportunity to generate a commission through a referral program, a partner program, an affiliate program, then that's awesome. Always start with the problem that your audience has. So that's the first mistake that a lot of people make is just choosing the wrong product. And again, we're gonna go into that five-point checkup process to make sure you are promoting the right products in just a sec. And number two, dull promoter, promotional strategies. It really bothers me, and this is just a pet peeve of mine. I have weird pet peeves. Um, when I see a person promote a product and it's working so well for them, and they just share the link on social media and maybe in a blog post, and that's it. If you find a product that is working for your audience, it is actually your job to go out there and promote it even more. So this is why this presentation is important because I'm gonna share with you not so dull promotional strategies and ways that you can get it in front of more people and in a way that's gonna matter, right? So don't do the dull promotional strategies. So let me ask you, chat. let's get you involved a little bit. What kinds of products can you promote as an affiliate? A lot of us think that we are limited to only software, or digital products or things like that, maybe some physical products on Amazon. But let's go over this and I'm gonna share with you the list here real quick, but let me know in the chat what you feel we might be able to recommend and generate a revenue whilst recommending. Well, I'm gonna share the list with you right now. Physical products, yes. Digital products, software, coaching programs, services, online courses, books, events, bookings, yes, events. There was a time where I would go to an event, it's no longer in existence, but I went to this event and they had an affiliate program for this event. It was run on eventbrite.com. And I told my audience, hey, I'm gonna be at this event. And if you go through my affiliate link and go to this event, we're gonna go get coffee together at this coffee shop. And I was able to not just get my ticket paid for for this event, not just get my flight paid for to go to this event, but I actually made money going to this event. I got to host a meetup for my audience and I got paid a commission by recommending that affiliate link to go to an event. But yes, all these things that are being mentioned in the chat right now, everything from protein supplements to events to um, baby gear, mother's health products, absolutely. 
the world is our oyster and we have the ability to promote these things. Now, there's going to be cases where you promote something and it doesn't have an affiliate program. Should you not promote it? No, you should still promote it because it's still a value to your audience. However, when you approach it that way and you do come across a recommendation that has an affiliate program, your audience will trust you and will likely take you up on that recommendation. So how do we know if a product is right for us to promote in this way? Well, there's five points I wanna offer you, and we're gonna go over those right now. Number one, before you even select the product, you have to know what the pains and the problems are that your target audience is going through. This is the biggest thing. This is what's going to connect the product to the audience that you're serving. Understand the pains and problems. You should have a list of them somewhere. What are the things that your audience needs help with? What are their inconveniences? What are the things in their life that wish that they wish was made easier? These are the problems, these are the things that you can then solve with those products, right? When you find a product, can you relay the promise? Can you understand even what the promise is of that particular product, right? And does that align with the problems that they have? What is the promise? What is the promise? The promise is what is this thing supposed to do? What is the promise that will, like what's the experience that a person will have with it and where will they end up? What will be solved for them, right? If you're having a hard time understanding the promise of what that product is, when you promote it, it's likely gonna be hard for them to understand as well. If you can do a good job of relaying it for your audience, then that will help out much better. And that's where proof comes in. Proof can go a very long way because people default to doubt online. I'm gonna say that one more time. This is apparent across the board, but especially when it comes to you promoting other people's products. People default to doubt, right? People default to doubt. Renee, Renee says, how about restaurants? I would imagine that you could make a deal with a restaurant and say, hey, for every patron I bring in, you're gonna give me this amount of money. I'm sure that's possible. People default to doubt. So they're gonna need proof to understand that this isn't just something that you made up, that this isn't something that is fake out there because there's a lot of people who talk a good talk, but when it comes time to walk, they're tripping over themselves, right? So we need to have some sort of proof. What is the best kind of proof? Your own personal experience but adding proof of other people going through this process or using this product as well, if there's any data or case studies that can go along with it, that's great, but your own personal experience with it will be much better. It's so much easier to promote something when you've used it yourself, for obvious reasons, because you can speak better to that product, but also, as far as the optics are concerned, your audience will know that you're at least a little bit more truthful about this promotion because you've used this product yourself. The other component about this is if you've used this product yourself, you're likely to more answer questions. You're better likely to answer more questions about that product, which again, if a person's asking you a question about a product, that's a great thing. They're curious about it. If you can respond because you know that this product works and how to use it and how it might best work for them, they're gonna be more likely to take you up on that offer and use that affiliate link, which that company will give you, which is where that commission tracking comes from. And number five, you need a promotional strategy. Just because you find a product doesn't mean anything, you have to have the right promotional strategy. But when it comes down to it, this is the ultimate affiliate marketing strategy right here. We play pickleball. Dude, there's so many pickleball pieces of equipment that you could probably promote, absolutely. The ultimate affiliate marketing strategy is this. Treat these products that aren't yours like they're yours. That's the big secret. A lot of us don't do this because it's not our product, but imagine if you are speaking to a product, if you treat it as if it was yours, you're able to answer the right questions, you're able to serve your audience better, you're able to show your own examples. Because if you had your own product, you would do a lot to promote it, right? But where people fall short is we're promoting another person's product and we just put a link on social media or link on a website and that's it. You can do a lot better and that's why we're here. Treat it like if it was yours, right? Where do you start though? What if you don't have any idea what your target audience, your niche is interested in? I mean, you might have some idea because you're probably a part of that audience as well, but you wanna know what your audience is buying. Well, why don't you just ask them? This is a great question to ask on social media. I love asking this question. I was gonna ask this earlier, but I totally forgot. Um, just to kind of show you the power, but you can do this yourself even right now. You can ask your audience, what was the latest purchase you made that made the biggest difference for you related to pickleball or what have you? Gonzo said, you did that to me with a camera. Yes, 
uh, Gonzo's in the Pokemon space with me, and uh, now he has a Insta360 camera as a result of me showing him how I used it. <laughs> See, this stuff works in real time. But simply asking your audience that same question, I'll repeat it one more time in case you're doing this live with us right now. What was the latest purchase you made, or what was the most valuable purchase you made as of late or recently that helped you with blank? This way, when you get responses, you're going to have people tell you, I bought this. I bought that. This thing was really cool. And you could take that. You could even say that and go to the product company that was referenced. Say, hey, I have a lot of people who said they've used your product before. We should set up a deal. Or do you have an affiliate program? I'd love to recommend this even more to my audience. Because if a few people are buying it in your audience, likely there's going to be more people who will want to buy it. They just don't know it's the right thing for them yet. You can be that person to connect them, right? The other thing that you can offer is, well, what is the first step? If you know that your audience has a goal, especially in the educational space of any kind, what might be the first step they might wanna take? For me, I remember when I was promoting a hosting company pretty heavily, that was because I was showing people how to build websites, niche sites from scratch. Well, first step, you wanna go build a website. Here's a link to where to go to set that up. That was an affiliate link. And I had made, I think, three hundred dollars or $400,000 just by simply recommending the first step and the first product related to that step. Because what you're doing, again, is you're curating. You're getting all the noisy things out there and saying, no, 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 don't worry about all that noise. Here's the one thing that you need to do next or buy next or that would help you on your way to success next, right? So that was step one. Step one was figuring out the right product. And you should probably have already in your mind a list of products. Now, in our course, 123 Affiliate Marketing, we talk about going over the um, – or finding a focus product, right? Because you can use these strategies with 100 different products in your lineup. But finding that first one is going to be really important. So in your mind, you might know what that first one is. If you don't, you might want to think about that right now. What's your first focus product? And you can take that focus product through the rest of the strategies that I'm going to share with you including step two here, which are passive promotional strategies. There's passive and then there's active. I like passive because you can set this up once and it will continue to work for you over time. Doesn't mean it's a set and forget forever, but you can set and forget it for a while, right? Things still require maintenance. There's literally no such thing as 100% passive income unless you're Bobby Bonilla who played with the Mets. If you know, you know. Number two, I also love passive promotional strategies because they're not super aggressive or, 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 or sleazy. Sometimes we worry about promoting and feeling sleazy or that you have to take a bath because it feels slimy or you have to wear a mask because it's snake oil. No, these strategies are great because you can set them up and they're actually useful, but they can continue to work for your time uh, over time as well. And you can get organic traffic in this way as well. Still have over 500 people watching. This is wild. Thank you so much for being here today. So the first passive promotional strategy I wanna share with you that fits the bill here is a resource page. I can't tell you how many times I go to a person's website and I wanna know what are the top tools they're using right now to accomplish whatever. I want them to tell me because I follow them. They are the expert. But then I have to dig through other blog posts, I have to dig through other podcasts to find these things. What if they were all on one page like my friend Thomas Frank here, who has a website called College Info Geek. Thomas Frank here on YouTube is also a very popular Notion productivity person, and he's got a YouTube channel with almost 3 million subscribers. But he also has this niche website called College Info Geek, which helps kids and parents learn how to do well in college, how to study, and all those kinds of things. Number one, a resource page is a highly valuable maintained page for your audience. It consolidates all the recommendations that you've ever made into one spot. Number two, you should mention and link to this everywhere. I mention and link to our resource page several times in our podcast, in blog posts, on social media, and it's great because I've done the job of curating things for people, and here they are all in one spot. I have them into different categories. As you can see, Thomas is here. There's like productivity, there's learning, there's gear, there's writing tools, there's career, money, travel, all those kinds of things. And number three, affiliate disclaimers should be included. Um, we'll talk more about what that means later, but you should definitely add that on your resource page. And here's a fun fact. 25% of my affiliate sales come from my resource page, which is pretty amazing. Here's Thomas who said, being an expert curator is a great way to build your personal brand. People love being pointed to the tools that can help them, and a resource page full of them is a delight. Now, what's cool about Thomas is he has not just the resource page with all the resources, he has specialized resource pages. He has a resource page that you could actually find on Google. If you look up college packing list, you could find his college packing list on Google. So he's getting organic traffic 
because this list is super helpful. Imagine a parent whose kid is about to go to college. They're looking for a college packing list. And what's cool about this list is where do you think every link goes to when you click the mattress or you click the bedding or you click the lamp lamp desk or, or the desk lamp or you click the backpack? It goes to Amazon in an affiliate link. So he's passively generate revenue from this specified. He has like the overall one, but then he's like, hey, by the way, are you going to college soon? You wanna know what to bring? Here's my college packing checklist. And he has a PDF file that you could download with that. He goes all in on providing value there. It's super helpful. And because it's helpful, it's ranking really high, which is really neat. Uh, a student of mine is a person who helps people with hikes and backpacking, right? So he has a, he has a resource page on his website. We help them on it. And it has all the equipment, right? But think about it. Not all backpackers or hikers are created equal. Some are taking day trips. Some are taking those really long Pacific Coast Trail six-month trips, right? Do they need the same equipment? No. Completely different pieces of equipment. So he has a resource page specifically for going on a day hike. Here's what you might need. Hey, you're going to go hike the Pacific Coast Trail? Cool. Here's a resource page for that. And also a link to his guide. All those kinds of things, right? So you can have specialized resource pages. I want you to think about right now in your particular audience, what sub-niches exist? Might that particular sub niche or one of them at least that comes to mind benefit from a resource page just for them right so for me for example here's a resource page for podcasters here's a resource page for youtubers here's a resource page for affiliate marketers etc right now you don't just have to do this on a website many people nowadays are doing this on social media social media is actually interesting in the way that it's progressing where you're starting to see a lot of longer form content on social media. LinkedIn is a great place for this, but this is on X. Steven's podcast has a list of resources for um, various things. These are just links to YouTube channels, but still very useful. And uh, Shushant here has links to tools related to AI. Some of them are free, some of them are not, but these curated lists is the key here, right? The curated lists. Let's move on to another passive technique that I really love. This is a technique I like to call the audit technique. And this plays on a lot of human psychology and it works really well and you're gonna see how in just a second. So this is a blog post, it could be a YouTube video, it could be a podcast, but this is a checklist, right? An audit. How many of these 10 things are you actually doing with email marketing? So let's just use email marketing as the example here. Again, this is like an audit that I'm offering to my audience. This positions me as an authority a little bit. It's like, hey guys, here's a checklist of all the things you need to do how many of them are you doing? So just for example, number one might be use a reputable email service provider. Cool. Number two might be uh, write in a way that doesn't look like a college essay, but rather short paragraphs, quick, condensed writing. Cool. Check. Got that. Number three, make sure it's tied to a business email address. Check. Okay. Check, check, check. You're checking these things off. And maybe around six or seven it gets to the point where people are gonna to start to not have these checks. For example, in this particular audit for email marketing, one of them is tag and segment your audience so that you can better send emails to different parts of your, of your email list. And what's cool about this is when people don't have that checked off, they're gonna go, wait, I'm not doing that. How should I go about doing that? That's where you can insert the recommendation. Right? You can even do a little bit of teaching there, but that's where I recommend ConvertKit because ConvertKit, for example, can help you with tagging and segmenting your audience really easily so that you're not sending emails to people who don't deserve those emails. If you have photographers in your audience, for example, you know you can segment, okay, here are the Sony camera users and here are the Canon camera users and here are the Nikon, Nikon camera users. If I have a coupon for Canon, I'm not gonna send it to Sony and Nikon because it's just for the Canon users, right? So this is the example that I use in the audit, and I go, hey, if you wanna get started on how to do this, click here for ConvertKit, right? So this audit technique is really great because psychologically people are gonna go, oh, I need to fill out that form, I need to check all the things on the checklist off, and they're gonna figure out how to do that, especially if you provide value and show the real reason why to do that, right? In the backpacking one, I mean, you can even uh, turn the resource page into an audit, or you can have both, have the resource page, but also have a blog post that says, 10 things you absolutely must have if you are going to hike the Pacific Coast Trail. Here's this piece of equipment, here's this piece of equipment, here is the um, scheduling tool to help you go to the 
guide posts when you need to, whatever a person might need, they're going to want to check off that list, especially for something like that, because if you don't follow that list, well, you could be in trouble, right? So an audit can work really, really well. There will be time for questions at the end. I see a lot of great questions coming in. Thank you, Charles, Jennifer, uh, Meliza. Uh, we'll have some space at the end for that. But again, this audit technique is super, super great. And you can use this multiple times. Again, you can turn this into a lead magnet that can have a checklist that a person can download. Now they're on your email list. And now, even over time, you can send them a nurture sequence. And maybe in a couple of weeks, you say, hey, by the way, remember that checklist I sent you earlier? Well, number seven was this one. And if you haven't done that yet, click here. It's my recommendation for this problem or this particular checklist item, right? So it works really, really well. Okay, let's talk about now some active promotional strategies. I talked about a couple passive ones, right? The resource page and the audit technique. Such a fun way to create content is the audit technique. I mean, I, I need to be doing that more because it really moves people. But number three, let's talk about active promotional strategies. Active meaning, okay, it's usually time-based, like this happens at this time on this date. And what's nice about that is it builds in some urgency, right? Like it ha like you have to get this done at this time. I'll, again, show you an example in just a second. And number two, it does require a little bit more work and time to execute, but you're likely to see bigger results like what we have. My number one favorite way to do this is what I like to call the small win, small win challenges. This is over at 100emails.com, and this is a little challenge that we set up. It's completely free. I did this live first, and now it's automated, all done via a drip sequence in email, so it's all automated now. But when I did this live, we had 14,000 people participate, which was really amazing. And the thing about these small win challenges is, number one, it provides a small challenge related to one of their first steps, right? So this is why it's zero to 100 email subscribers in three days. The timing is really important too. If I said zero to 100 emails in one year, well, that's a whole year's worth of work. That's, that's too much, right? Three days. People can put aside three days or a 24-hour challenge or a 48-hour challenge. Those work best. And there's a reason why it's not zero to 10,000 emails because zero to 100 is relatively doable in a person's mind, right? Okay, I, can, I, can, I think I can get to 100 emails in three days. It's just challenging enough to not be scary, right? Number two, the affiliate product fits naturally as step two. And number three, the challenge can spread virally like it did for us. So where does the affiliate thing play into this? Okay, so let me, let me show you what happens here. If you go to 100emails.com, right? You put in your email and then you says, okay, on this date, we're gonna start the challenge. It's gonna last three days. What's really cool is there's no purchasing required, right? You don't want people to have to buy something to be able to participate in the challenge either. You want it to be as simple and frictionless as possible, but just challenging enough, right? So there are three emails that go out over the course of three days, and by the end of day three, you're likely to get to 100 emails. Some people get to several hundred emails. Some people get maybe not quite 100, but they're seeing progress in building their email list, which they've never had before. Now, Day four comes out. I don't know why I said it like that. Four. Day four comes, and guess what? Hey, great job. You got more email subscribers than you ever had before. Now you need to know what to do with them. You need to put them into an email service provider so that you can send broadcasts, and you can start to create autoresponders and build your list even more. Here's my recommended product, ConvertKit, right? So again, the challenge helps them get to a point where they go, okay, now I need this thing. So I want you to think about a product, your focus product, what might be a great challenge that would relate to that focus product where your focus product is step two. Step one, do this. So let's say, for example, I was doing one about building websites, right? And my focus product was a hosting company to then click a link so I can get a commission by recommending hosting to my audience who participates in this challenge. Well, the challenge would be the 24-hour name your brand challenge, right? You're gonna start a new business, great. Let's go, you're gonna watch a little video or you're going to receive an email with some tips to help you with your brand and at the end of one day, you will have a brand name that has a domain available that passes trademark, right? Maybe maybe that's the challenge. It's like, here are three things. Number one, pick a name. Number two, um, make sure it has a domain name and number three, make sure it passes trademark passes, right? Um, and once you get that, boom, get your domain name. Day four, or no, 
day two, excuse me, because it's a 24-hour challenge. The next challenge is, uh, or the next uh, step is, okay, now that you have that, go get your domain. Here's the link to go and get it, and here are some steps to make it easy for you, right? So this works really, really well. Challenge into step two, because you've now given them a win, right? That's the beauty of even this particular challenge right here. People were like, oh my gosh, I didn't think I could do it. Now I have an email list. What do I do next, Pat? What's next? What's my next step? You've, you've already proven that you know what you're talking about. So guess what? They're more likely to take you up on that offer, right? Give me a quick, I'm doing a little energy check here. Give me a thumbs up if you like that strategy and if you're still with me here. We still have over 500 people watching right now, which is really amazing, but are we seeing how these strategies work? It's not just a link on a website. It's not just a link on social media, right? The, these, are, these are campaigns that you know will take a little bit more time. Uh, the passive ones are a lot easier that we talked about just a second ago, but these active ones, they're a little bit more involved. But can you see just how much more powerful they can be with unlocking confidence in a person's purchasing decision? So much easier to understand, right? And this is this is what our course 123 Affiliate Marketing is full of, all of these sort of recipes, if you will. All right, are you ready for another active strategy that actually uh, continues to work for you over time and can get you organic traffic. I'm excited about this one because this is my all-time favorite strategy right here. I love the challenge. The challenge is great. And again, you can do it live once and say, on this date, it's happening. Come on, everybody, let's do this. And then they do it. And then guess what? You can automate that. Now you just have, like us, 100emails.com. People put, put in their email. They get fed three emails after three three days, and the fourth email talks about the next thing. It's just It's just on autopilot now. Now I'm also able to go, here's a really helpful thing that'll help you get this result. And then, oh, by the way, you'll be recommended a product that helps you even further after that. So, so genius. I love that. Next, we're going to talk about the affiliate marketer's secret weapon. Woo. Yeah. This is my all-time favorite way to go about getting affiliate commissions. It's fun. A um, little bit more involved, right? Like I said, these are a little bit more active. However, I've gotten better results doing this than anything else. What is it? The demo video. The demo video. Demonstration video on how a product, how simple a product is to use. All of my highest converting campaigns use demo videos. A demonstration video on YouTube specifically because YouTube has the algorithms that can get you in front of a lot more people. This works for all products, including online courses, physical products, digital products, right? On the left-hand side, this is a old school screenshot of what ConvertKit looked like, and I was showing people how easy it was to use. On the right-hand side is a microphone called a Samson Q2U, which I recommend in my podcasting tutorial, but I also have a separate video about that, which has now been seen over 100,000 times. And guess what? People click the affiliate link in the description, and I get paid for that. And they help me get organic traffic, which is pretty amazing. So a demo video works really, really well. And maybe I'm preaching to the choir here because we're all on YouTube right now while watching this. But yeah, Della says, I saw your tripod at FinCon. Yeah, I saw, thank you for that. I saw it uh, being mentioned on stage by Paula Pant, which is really crazy. So anyway, thank you for that. Uh, here are some tips for when creating a demo video. I'm not just gonna leave it at that. I wanna give you some advice. Number one, Find other demo videos for the same product and make yours better. The best research tool for mastering YouTube is guess what? YouTube itself. So if you know that you're gonna be creating a demo video, by the way, I'm not asking you to do a review. This is a little bit different. This is a demo video. A review can sometimes feel a little biased and yes, you can do a review as well and give it a rating. But a demo video, the purpose of a demo video is also not to share every little button and doohickey and page and, you know, whatever. It's not that. That could also be another video that you can do that goes more in depth, like almost like a user's manual. The demo video's purpose is to show people how simple this thing is to use and what the result is. That's what people want. People look for these things before they buy something. They see that you are showing them how to use it and even offer some of your own voice, some of your own value, your own tips with it. 
based on your own style and your own brand, cool. Now people are more likely to take you up because you've convinced them, yes, this is the thing I need. I've been looking for it. Now I see somebody who's using it or who used it. It's working for them, and I like it. I like it. Here's a link that's conveniently right here in the description that I can click to go for it, right? And number three, publish on YouTube and optimize for keywords, right? Publish for YouTube, optimize for keywords. In the uh, All Access Pass, by the way, we have a course called YouTube from Scratch. Um, if you're in the All Access Pass, you get access to that and our entire course catalog. But uh, there are some specifically title and thumbnail things that you need to worry about when it comes to these demo videos, right? You wanna make sure that you include the name of the product in the title, but also in the thumbnail. Use the logo of that product as well. This is something that when a person's scrolling through after searching for that product, or it gets fed to them on the algorithm without them even searching for it, sometimes that can still happen, um, suggested in browse traffic, seeing the logo there is really great because it connects to them what this product is, and then you show them how easy and simple it is to use, right? So again, if you're in the All Access Pass, you get access to that, and you can kind of just go and enter that course whenever you want. We have the one, two, three Affiliate Marketing Accelerator happening this week actually is the kickoff and the content starts next Monday if you wanna get involved with that and get some help from my team. Here's a specific example, a recent one. Descript. How many of you know Descript? I love Descript. They just acquired Squadcast. They're a great podcast editing tool. I do talk about them. And I talked about them in a couple ways when they first came out. Number one, this new audio and video editor is a game changer. Auto transcriptions and screen recording too. And that got viewed 47,000 times uh, across the span of nine months. And I followed up that video with another one that was a little bit more uh, built for browse and suggested traffic, which was more of a, of, a, of a head turner, if you will. This audio editing tool deep faked my voice, eye emojis, actually useful or scary. And in nine months, this got nine, or excuse me, ten, one million views. I think it's one point something now, but one million views. And of course, in these videos, I show off the script, I show how cool it is, I react to it, and then I share the affiliate link. That affiliate link gets clicked on. It's been clicked on over 4,000 times, and in the course of, this isn't even updated actually, it's through May, uh, through May of this year, um, in a year and a half, or actually two years, this thing has generated $40,000 in commissions. Commissions, that's take home money from two videos about a single software tool. It's crazy, right? Now, Descript is reaching out saying, hey Pat, we noticed this video is doing some good stuff for us, let's chat, let's chat and I'm chatting with them. That's all I can say about that. But as you can see, this is just a more recent example of a brand new tool that I did not create any content about on my website before, but I have a demo video for and YouTube's doing most of the legwork for me to get in front of people and generate these commissions for me, right? So I just wanted to share that with you because $40,000 of all commissions paid for, I mean, again, I spent time to edit these videos. I, I made sure to create a good title and thumbnail. Um, when you put in a little bit of extra work like that, it can definitely pay off, right? Approved value is just over the course of the, the last time period. So every month they go in and they see what's coming and then they approve that and then it goes over to, to total value. All right, let's finish this up. Follow the rules. We definitely wanna make sure we follow the rules because in the world of affiliate marketing, you don't wanna get banned, you don't wanna get uh, in trouble. Now, in most cases, you're not gonna get like deeply in trouble for things. However, we do need to make sure we follow the law. Number one, I'm not a lawyer. That's, I think, very clear, but also I need to make that clear because I'm not a lawyer. Number one, you must disclose the affiliate relationship that you have with the company that you're promoting. So inside of those Descript videos, for example, I do say, by the way, I'm an affiliate for this company, and if you go through this link, I do get paid a commission. I've, I've cleared, I've, I'm, I'm within law now, right? And again, the whole purpose of this is to just make sure that the consumers know 
what's actually happening so they can make a smart decision and they don't believe that this is my product or I'm not pretending like it's my product. Obviously, Descript is not my product, but we have to be upfront with that anyway. Now, when I first heard that rule, I was like, oh my gosh, this is gonna, this is gonna stunt my growth because now people know that I'm making money by doing this. Number one, when you create content and it is of value, then you almost kind of have permission to do that because you've almost earned it at that point. But number two, actually, a lot of people will go out of their way to make sure you get paid for this if you are getting value, right? I've had some people not know that that was the case and we're all often opening up new windows to go get those products, but then said, Pat, I didn't know that you get paid when you click on your link. I'm gonna make sure I click on your link all the time now because I wanted to make sure you get paid back. And again, it's at no extra cost to them as well, which is really cool. So that's number one. You must disclose the affiliate relationship. Can you do that in a link at the bottom of the website? No, it has to be at the point at which you mention that product's affiliate link. It has to be in that time, the first time you do it. And um, you know, even on social media, you have to do it as well. Number three, a note on an affiliate disclaimer page, like I said, or even at the bottom of your website will not suffice. That used to be what everybody else was doing, but just men just mention it. And what I like to do to al almost soften that, that mention and not make it about me, like, hey, I get paid a commission if you go through my link. I often say, and by the way, if you have any questions about this, let me know, right? That way I open it up and let people know that, okay, I'm still here for you and I'm still providing value to you in this way. Now, Amazon, a lot of you might be an affiliate for Amazon, there's some specific guidelines there as well. A lot of the same rules apply. You must disclose the affiliate relationship that you have with Amazon. But here are the two big kickers here. No links in emails and no links in eBooks. That was mind blowing to me when I first uh, saw that in the terms of conditions for the affiliate program, the Amazon Associates program. And I was like, that's dumb. Why would they not want that? And it makes sense for Amazon. Amazon thrives on knowing what happens and who clicks on what and the history and the search and all these kinds of things. If these links are in emails, they're sort of siloed, right? Because information does not pass through all the way to Amazon in that way. So they just basically have a blanket statement, no links in emails, no links in books. So are we screwed? No, because guess what you have? A resource page. You can link to that resource page. You don't even have to mention the affiliate disclosure right there because you're linking to the resource page. The resource page has the list of books. If you have an ebook, for example, you can even at the end of the book say, hey, by the way, there's a resource page on my website for this book that's always changing. I always have it up to date. Click on this link in this ebook to go to that page. Boom. Don't have to mess you up the book with the affiliate disclaimer. I just bring people back to the website. Everybody's good. And that's where the affiliate disclaimer exists and that's where all those links are, right? I can even include more. Same thing for emails. Um, there are a lot of companies that will allow you to include affiliate links and emails. A lot of uh, personal brands, products, and, and even software will allow you to do that, but Amazon does not. Um, but again, having a resource page. Here is a resource page with all of the latest baby items for sale for my mommy brand. Great. I always update it. It's always there. I just link to that on my website, on my podcast. Everywhere. That's, again, the power of the resource page is to have that there. Number four, links on social media and YouTube are totally okay. Totally okay to mention affiliate products on those platforms. You just have to mention that they're an affiliate link. And number five, you have to let people know they're going to Amazon. I actually had my book club page trigger a Amazon ban. I was banned from Amazon because of my book club page because on my book club page, I had all the books that I had read that we were reading as a book club. And I had a link that said, buy the book and it would go to Amazon. I had to be very dis I had to be very clear that when you click on this link, you're going to Amazon to buy these books. I was using buy now buttons that made it look like I own the books. Even though people were still going to Amazon, I eventually after just a ton of headache got it back. Anyway, don't don't mess with Amazon. Sometimes you, like it's just bad. So, Pat Flynn, you are saying no affiliate links in the ebook for Amazon specifically for Amazon specifically. Plus, having it on a resource page on your website, Bill, is great anyway because you can make sure it's always up to date and you don't have to keep updating the ebook itself. Although if you think about it, updating an ebook is not terribly hard. So I have a couple questions for you. Number one, what was the most valuable piece of information that you picked up today? We talked about a lot of different things. We talked about um, the way that you should approach selecting a product, right? How might you go about doing that? in a five-point process, the promise. 
after understanding the problem, showing proof, personal experience, and then having promotional strategies. We talked about passive promotional strategies. Remember the resource page. But then also we talked about the audit technique. Then we talked about in more active campaigns, we talked about the demo videos and of course the small win challenge, which is really key. And of course we talked about all the lawyer stuff as well. And I will have some time to answer some questions in just a minute, but that was the first question that I wanted to ask you. The last slide, just really quick, was this one here. Demo video and affiliate marketing, the resource page, demo the product, not a review, thanks this beautiful day. Resource page, resource page, demonstrating the product. Yes, show, show how easy it is to use. So that's the first question. The second question is, and I've already seen some people ask about it, may I have your permission? Just give me a yes in the chat if it's okay. May I have your permission to share more about 123 Affiliate Marketing with you. This is our course that we've had. We've had it since 2017. It's our second most popular course. Thousands of people have gone through it. I wanna share a little bit about it with you in case you are interested. And like I said, I also have that free gift for you if you stick around just a little bit longer. But I wanted to share this with you and all I need is a yes from the chat to make sure this is totally cool to do. Yes. Awesome. Veronica says, but you said the guy with the document Yes, he had a PDF file with the checklist, but all the links were on his website still with the affiliate disclaimer. The The links were not in the PDF file. Yes, okay, wow, okay, great. Um, 123 Affiliate Marketing is my repeatable, which is important, step-by-step -step affiliate marketing online training course that also acts as accountability for your investment because I know a lot of us know that these opportunities have always been here, but when you're going through this, and especially with the All Access Pass Accelerator coming up, when you go through this with my team, you're going to implement this and you will be going to see results. And the way this works is step one, you select your focus product. This is what we're gonna talk about. We're gonna go deeper into this in the course to make sure you're finding the right product to take through the rest of this program. And of course, after you finish, you can go through it with many other products after that. Step two, we're gonna set up, literally have you set up different passive promotional strategies. We talked about a couple of them, the audit technique, as well as the resource page. There's several more that you can include on, on your website, on your bios, and all these kinds of things so that it's all ready to go and they're just kind of, the seeds have been planted, if you will. And then step three, we're gonna conduct an active promotion for your audience. And we're gonna do that together and that's what's really great about this. And when you do this and when you do it right, that's automated income, right? Now, the cool thing is in this course, you also get access to the affiliate marketing recipe book. Now, what is that? The recipe book is a list of recipes for the different kinds of products that exist out there. For example, if you have a software that you wanna sell and you choose this recipe, this is selling through teaching. That's the name of this particular recipe. This is if it's a software and you wanna sell it by teaching on a webinar. Well, like a recipe book, here's all the ingredients that you need. You need an affiliate link for the software. You need a webinar software with a registration page. You need a 45-minute value-based presentation with some examples. You need a call to action and a pitch. All those kinds of things are in here. And I wanna give this one to you for free right now. This is what this one looks like inside of the recipe book. If you go to smartpassiveincome.com slash recipe, you can download that right now and just keep it. This is one that has a level six effectiveness, and this is just based on my own ranking scale, um, based on how difficult it is, how aggressive it can feel, and can you make it evergreen? Yes, uh, there's a lot of other ones based on if you're selling a software, if you're selling books, if you're selling courses. This is if you're selling software, that's where it is. So smartpassiveincome.com slash recipe. Now, one, two, three affiliate marketing, this is what Prerna said, who is one of our students, was one of the smartest things we did for our business last year. Knew when it came to affiliate marketing, Pat was the only one who could help us create a solid plan that offered insane value to our audience while helping us increase our revenue. I wasn't wrong. She was a student since 2017, one of our OGs. Now, we used to sell this course for $499 as a standalone course. And it actually is still there, but we don't want to have you go that route anymore because you can save a lot more money and get a lot more value going this way with our all access pass. Are there any all access pass members in the chat right now? I'm curious. Our all access pass was created in 2022. You can get access to all of our online courses and workshops, which is 123 Affiliate Marketing, the YouTube from Scratch course, Heroic Online Courses, Build Your Brand, Podcasting, Affiliate Marketing, Webinars, Emails, etc. You get access to an active community of other like-minded entrepreneurs like you, and I think we all know and feel how important it is to connect with other like-minded people now. 
because you can't do this alone. Number three, you get access to my team to guide and support you, which is really amazing because we don't want to leave you hanging. This is unlike the standalone course where you kind of just were left on your own. Number four, you get guided pathways through the various courses. It would be one thing to just go, hey, here's all of our courses. They each have a value of hundreds of dollars and now they're yours. Go, good luck. That's actually of disservice because that's just more information. You don't need more information. You need to know which information to get and what order to go through them with, right? And depending on where you're at, we can guide you through the different courses. If you are a podcaster, you take this course, this course, and then the email marketing course, and this one, et cetera. So we guide you through that to make sure you know that not all the things you need, but the things that you need are right there. And then finally, our biggest thing, our most successful part of this are our accelerators. Um, I wish I had the data but because we talked about it in New Orleans last uh, last week. But our team saw a significant increase in course completion rates and success from people who join our accelerators, which is you can go through the course together with other students at the same time with an instructor. You can watch the videos. It's like, hey, week one, watch this module and these lessons. Week two, watch these ones and these ones. And there's office hours that are optional that you can go to. This way you can learn asynchronously. You don't have to show up to a lecture. You've consume it on your own time, but there's real-time learning and conversation happening around this, real-time accountability, real-time help for my team, and our next accelerator actually starts on Thursday. The kickoff call for 123 Affiliate Marketing is on Thursday. We're also uh, happy to be in the middle of a podcasting one right now, and we're running several throughout the year next year as well that you can get access to, too, for free if you're a part of the All Access Pass already. Anyway, our next accelerator starts on Thursday, October 26th. The content starts on Monday. This is just the kickoff call. And you can see when you get into the All Access Pass, all those courses are right there with the community. And these are just some of the courses that are in there. And you can see how much they're worth standalone, right? They're all inside of the All Access Pass. Thank you, Civic. I appreciate you. Now, knowing that all these courses exist, and you can see the prices right there, of them individually. Knowing that these are all a part of the access pass, what would you expect the value, uh, the price to be for access to all of those courses, right? You would expect it to be pretty high and you've seen a lot of other creators do this before where they kind of put everything all into one spot. And again, it's not just leaving you hanging with all that information, it's guidance through it, it's instructors, it's the accelerators like our one, two, three affiliate marketing one that's starting soon. Well, if you break it down, $59 a month. We bill you quarterly, $179 a quarter. You could save a little bit if you go annual, but we wanted the barrier to entry to be much lower than we've ever had it before. And this is just enough to get you going without breaking the bank. And it's one of those things where once you get in, you're gonna see the value is unlike anything else we have to offer. SPI's All Access Pass is now becoming an example for other creators on how to do this because just giving you a course is not gonna be enough. And we wanted the buried entry to be much, much lower. So just 59 a month. And this is where you need to go. You could sign up by Wednesday, October 25th to get into the next accelerator. You can join the All Access Pass today at smartpassiveincome.com slash 123am. And that's where the link is. smartpassiveincome.com slash 123am. Here's another testimonial from Mr. William Beam said, I'm very selective about the online courses I purchase, mostly because I'm not sure about the value I'll receive in return. And this was back when it was just a standalone course. Now you get access to all those other things. One to three affiliate marketing was an easy decision to join. Not only do I respect Pat for his reputation in the affiliate marketing field, but I knew this course would pay itself off and then turn a profit. All I had to do was complete the course and implement the lessons. Jason got his first affiliate commission of 250 after joining the course. Brian, John, Fred, had his first Amazon commission, who, yes, I know it only says $3.44, but if you've never made any income before, that first feeling of getting revenue is unlike anything else. It's pretty amazing. And then Matthias, who made a deal with a company to make more than what he would have made just on Amazon alone. And again, this is where you need to go, smartpassiveincome.com slash 123AM. And I see Ashley, who's been one of our accelerator leaders and actually the creator behind the All Access Pass uh, is here in the chat and she's there to help you out, Heather on our team, and we are building our team up even more to help as these grow and scale over time. So I'm happy to stay for a few more minutes here to answer questions. I saw some great questions coming in. If you can uh, ask your questions now, I'll get to as many as I can in the next five to 10 minutes here for you. 
and then we could wrap up. But this is where you need to go right now. And again, you want to get in before Wednesday, the 25th of October, because our kickoff call is on Thursday. And then we have our training, which begins, on, which essentially just means watch this module and these lessons starting on Monday and then office hours that you get access to with me as well and, and the team and uh, just a lot of great value. We've seen, again, the numbers. It just made sense for us to change our business model because, yes, we could make more money by just selling these one off, but that wouldn't be providing the best value and service to you. So we built the team. We built the membership program to be able to do this for you in a way that will not just get you going with these results, but keep you going with the other things that you can get access to and the partnerships that you can make in there and the friendships that you can make in there too. Okay, so great questions here. Oh baby, I had no idea. Says newbie here. Will you be starting to record soon? Uh, or newbie who will start recording soon got the Samsung Q2U yesterday. Nice, actually, let me see if I can pop up these questions here. Uh, do, 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 do. Let's see, ah, I can, I think. Moving things around. Oh, I just want to be able to see these questions. All right. Oh, baby, I had no idea. Says, uh, we'll be starting to record soon. Got the Samsung Q2U yesterday. At what point should you start reaching out to companies about an affiliate marketing partnership? I would start reaching out to them now, especially if you already start using that product or if you've done the test of checking on social to see who's purchasing what. And if they are, your audience is already uh, purchasing those products. And it's a great conversation starter to go out and start reaching out to them. And again, many times companies will be totally fine signing up. Some people will want, or some companies will want to see a little bit more proof of, of an audience there, but many will let you in even early on because they don't have to pay you anything. They don't pay you unless you bring customers in. That's the beauty of the affiliate marketing program is that they're not losing anything, right? So I would start reaching out now. And even if they say no, the cool thing is that it starts the conversation. You can come back to them later after you've grown a little bit. I want to wish you the best of luck on your upcoming recordings because that's super exciting. And again, don't promote the product. Talk about the product. Show how easy it is to use and how it's made an impact in your life or somebody else's life. That's going to do really great. The Homework Dad says, does Amazon let you put their link into a URL shortener so you can have a single place to make changes when product links go bad? Yes, they do have that. However, they also have their own version called Amazon One Link, I think, that can help you do that as well. But we've used the uh, Pretty Links WordPress plugin to do that and have had no problems. Again, so long as when people click on that, they know they're going to Amazon. As long as that's the case, then they have no, uh, then they have no issues with that. Charles says, how do you set up a link where you can track traffic you direct to a certain source that doesn't have an affiliate program? So this is a great question. You can have a WordPress plugin called Pretty Links, track the links, but if a company does not have an affiliate program, there's two things you can do. Number one, you can help convince them to start one. Many times, don't talk to the CEO if it's a bigger company. You wanna to talk to the marketing person who's there, who understands what this means because they'll be able to likely set this up. In some cases, they, they, they just might need to turn something on on their end to, make, to enable this. And other times they might need to install some software to do it. And they might be able to do that. I've had companies do that for me before. But if they don't have that, you can set up a deal where it's more on an honor system, but both of you will wanna make sure you're both truthful with each other in order for you to both continue to partner with each other, right? So you can set up a coupon code. And if you set up a coupon code, they're able to track on their end how many times that coupon code was used. And you can just basically say, hey, you know, uh, let's do a deal where for every time a person uses this coupon code, you know, I get $15 uh, commission. And you can even have your own audience uh, send you receipts to kind of so that you have those receipts when that happens in uh, exchange for a bonus or something to track. It's a little bit more uh, kind of jerry-rigged in that way, but it's still possible and it can still happen and the coupon code is a great answer for that. Gonzo says, how often do new classes start? Um, we, Heather and uh, Ashley might be able to better answer that for you, Gonzo, but um, I know that we just launched the Power Up Podcasting Accelerator, which is I think in week two right now, which is really amazing and it's a much longer one. This one is a four week class, I believe, and so it's a lot shorter. And um, I think, will there be more by the end of the year? I, th I think so, I'm not exactly sure. They'll be able to tell you the schedule, but we do have multiple going on at um, you know at various times for various things. And we do go to the community to ask which ones do you want to have next? So we do get you involved in deciding which ones to go uh, through next. Pokey and fun. How do you get into Amazon affiliate link 
Can anyone get one? So you'll need to go to Amazon Associates. Poking Fun is about to get a, uh, actually, did you cross a, cross a, a thousand subs yet? Um, I think you were close to that, right? And so you should be monetized on YouTube soon, but you can have monetization on YouTube and affiliate links, sort of like a double whammy. If you go to the Amazon Associates webpage, you'll be able to apply there. And I think if you have any sizable audience, um, even on social, you should be able to come through. And if they don't approve you, you can just keep trying again uh, at a later date. So yeah, Amazon Associates is the name of their Amazon affiliate program. Luxury Card Store says, is it possible to do affiliate marketing without first having an audience? It is. You're going to obviously get a lot lower results, but it's like planting seeds, right? The, 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 the people haven't come to see those links yet, but they will come over time as you grow. And so the fact that they're there is great because when people come, especially for the earlier videos or the earlier podcast episodes or blog posts, those will be already injected in there. So yes, it definitely is possible, although I would just set that expectation that you're likely not going to get a ton of revenue, if not any, right at the start. Are traffic exchanges useful? I think collaborations are useful, like honest to goodness collaborations where you're sharing audiences with each other because they cross over and you wanna provide value to each other's audience, then absolutely, that is a form of a traffic exchange. But more like pay for traffic kind of things other than ads, um, there are places that you could go to pay for traffic or views and things that are just shady and actually can work against you. And I, I just worry about that. Tina says, Pat, do you get anything from people just clicking the links? In most cases, no. That's the beauty of the affiliate program for the product owner is they only have to pay if the right audience is coming in. And, and it also protects them of just, again, uh, traffic farming, right? A person could pay to have traffic go through and just get paid for that traffic and then just get a return back if there was any. If there is any sort of return coming back from that, it would be just the fact that that is getting clicked on and that uh, that product company will see that there's traffic coming from a link that you're providing. And that is of useful, that is of use for them as well. Um, that link says not found, it should be good. Let me just double check. It should redirect you to this website here. And this is where you can go and click see what's included. And if you scroll down, the all access pass is obviously the better value and that's where you will want to go. So smartpassiveincome.com slash 123am. There you go. Yep, that should work. Thank you for letting me check that out though, just in case. Do you ever set up small group meeting program sites for your followers in say a place like Montana. Um, when I go travel somewhere, I used to rent out a small coffee shop or just say, hey, let's meet at this park and let's hang out. I think doing that is a great way to get your audience together. Do I personally do that now? I don't travel as much anymore, so I don't. But when I do go travel somewhere, I often try to set that up. Um, but if you are asking for yourself, yeah, definitely doing that is great. Even if you have two or three people show up just to kind of hang out and get to know them, there's a lot of value there when it comes to those conversations that you can have with your own audience and understanding more about how they found you, what are their problems, what have they tried to do that's not working for them. You can learn so much from them that you can then take into your brand from there. Amy says, I'm a member. Awesome, Amy, thank you. Any rules to know for Pinterest and Amazon links? For Pinterest specifically, I can't answer that off the top of my head, but I would imagine it's fairly similar. Although I would look on Pinterest boards because I'm guaranteeing that there are conversations about that already and I would not know that off the top of my head. Would you recommend a script I can read on my podcast to promote SPI says Omni? Um, a lot of people, so if you're going to promote SPI, that's awesome. I, 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 there, I have no expectation of you doing that, but thank you so much. Um, the idea of a script can be great. However, I always love the idea of a detailed outline so that you can just use that as guidance. This is for anything, right? Uh, intro to a video or a pitch or anything. Have a detailed outline so that you can still speak in your own language and in real time. And I think that's, you know, trust yourself to do that. If you need a script, that's great, especially on a podcast. However, people can often know when you're reading versus when you're just kind of speaking from the heart. And I would encourage you to, with whatever you're promoting, especially something from SPI, if you really enjoyed it, just talk about it on your podcast like you would talk about it with somebody else. Stefan says, what would be the best approach for a book club and not get in trouble with Amazon? 
Yeah, so just make sure that when you are telling people about these books to then go and purchase, right, which would be an affiliate link, that you don't have the affiliate link in an email, put it on a website, and on that website is where that book would, uh, you know, next month book, next month's book, get it here. It's this one, and this is why we're going to read it and what to look out for. Click on this link um, and either use the Amazon buy now link, which when people click on, it's uh, the button literally says Amazon. You can just get that on, like, Google Images or have a disclaimer there that says, this is an affiliate link. This link will take you to Amazon to purchase this book. Then you'll have no problems at all. All right, I'm gonna answer a few more questions. And again, thank you so much. A lot of these things are answered in the course itself, which is great. And again, if you go to smartpassiveincome.com slash 123 AM, you can get in by the time our next accelerator begins. Kickoff call is this Thursday where you're all just gonna get to know each other and meet your instructors. And then Monday is when the content begins. Canada Cat says, will the all access price be changing after October 25th? Um, we are discussing things like that. However, uh, you'll definitely wanna get in now before a price might go up at the beginning of next year, just to keep things you know, honest. But uh, yes, because we are adding a lot more value and hiring a lot more and um, seeing that the return has been really great for people who are in there. So uh, I would definitely get in now if you can. Uh, or at least by the end of the year, you'll probably see another promotion from us before um, a price increase if there is one next year. Anthony says, hey, Pat, question. How do you approach a company to promote their product when our podcast has a similar audience? Uh, that's actually a benefit. If your audience, oh, you mean, Anthony, my audience or your audience and their, and their product? I'm trying to get clarification on your question because this is a really good one. Um, so maybe answer both. If it's my audience and your audience are similar, like sure, they may be similar, but promote it because you're going to have people who would prefer your recommendation, who prefer your voice, and who want to hear it from you and your experience. Um, if the product company that you're promoting also has a podcast of a similar audience, then that's even better because they would then be more likely to know that your audience is similar and that the product recommendation would work well. Um, and there might be people who are on the fence who might need to hear it from you. This is a pitch that works really well. It's like, hey, you know, we share a lot of audiences perhaps. However, there might be people who are on the fence because they wanna hear it from a real user, not the company itself. People love to purchase things when they hear another user over another, over the company itself promoting it, right? You are more likely to trust another user so you can actually play that card and, and have it work really well. Question from Bobby Ann, do you have resources for creating or managing an affiliate program? Uh, I don't, Bobby Ann, that is a great question. We've had a few people ask us on how to do that. There are a lot of tools out there that you can use like Link Mink, that's the one that Descript uses. There's Rewardful, there is um, some WordPress plugins that you can use to set up your own affiliate program. A lot of the principles apply that we've talked about today on the other side of things. And my recommendation for you, just to kind of finish off here, would be to make sure that you try to train some of your affiliates to do some of these things that we talked about today, to just not link to the thing, but also create campaigns around it and put it on their resource page and encourage them to do that because ultimately that helps them make more money too. If you're making more money through an affiliate, that means they're making more money as well and that could be a win on both sides. All right, last question from Jade here. Is there a service where I can make my affiliate link look more memorable and attractive to click rather than a random string of letters and numbers that was assigned? Yeah, so you'll see this mentioned in the course, but I'll say it here right now, Jade, because this is a, a great one for people to take home. When you get an affiliate link from a company, it's going to be typically their website name and then a whole bunch of characters, equal signs, question marks, all these are like a whole random string that just essentially is a unique tracking link for you. But it's ugly. Imagine being on a podcast and saying, hey, go to convertkit.com slash equal sign question mark AZ1ZQPR question mark equal sign backslash. Like that would be insane, right? We have it as smartpassiveincome.com slash convertkit. Easy enough. How do we do that? We use a WordPress plugin called Pretty Link. Again, Pretty Link is the plugin that allows us to basically use that to forward into the affiliate link and um, to, to kind of mask it in that way, which is really cool. Uh, you could use something like Bitly for a few of them if you wanted to. Uh, my favorite strategy that I've seen people do, especially for products that you know you're gonna be promoting for a long time, 
and um, are a part of sort of your normal repertoire or arsenal of things to promote for your audience is to actually get a domain name. Uh, I've seen a few people do this like um, best email service provider.com, right? You just get that domain name and it just, you could forward it through that affiliate link and it becomes a memorable link. Just it's a .com um, or a .co or whatever you want to use. You can use a 90, if you look up 99 cent GoDaddy domain, you're likely to find something that you could use that is more memorable that can then, you know, you just have to go into the back end of your GoDaddy to have the link forward through into that affiliate link and you can go from there. So that's possible as well. All right. A lot of great, great questions and a lot of uh, really good attention and, and good energy today. Thank you so much, everybody. One last time, this is smartpassiveincome.com slash 123 AM to get into the next accelerator that is happening for this course. And um, you might have some stuff to take home that you can already use and implement today. But if you want a little bit of handholding, accountability, help, and you want an investment that pays you back, this is the course that does that for you more likely than others because there's direct ROI tied to the things that you're doing. So good luck, everybody. Looking forward to seeing you in there. Heather and Ashley, who are in the chat, thank you so much for being here from Team SPI. They're going to be there to serve you during the accelerator as well. And um, looking forward to uh, seeing the results. So good luck, everybody. Can't wait to feature your testimonial on a future webinar like this for the journey that starts today. So thank you so much, everybody. Take care and see you later.